We had Noel Clark in this week, as you may have because Star Trek's out as well, and he's got a small part in Star Trek at the start. Yeah. And Noel's always a good guy to talk to because. Love Noel. Yeah, because he's making moves and it, it sort of brings us into his world a little bit. Yeah. And I can ask him anything. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I said to him, obviously, um, ethnic actors, ethnic actors of ethnic origin, yeah. there are times when in films over the years they've just been typecast all the time. Like, mm. uh, for example, 20 years ago, if you were Russian, you're going to be the Russian baddie, definitely. Mm -hmm. If you're Italian, you're going to be in the mafia. If you're black, mm -hmm. you're going to be a hood. If you're Asian now, chances are you're going to be involved in a war on terror somehow or the other, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you've done a few movies now and this movie is about mm -hmm. that. So I said to Noel, how do you survive typecasting? Young actor listening to the show right now, how do you tell that person not to be typecast? Because that is one of the hardest things I'd imagine in your game. Yeah, I mean, well, weirdly, one of the words you're going to hear the most as an actor is the word no. The, the amount of jobs you go for and the, the ratio that you get is is like 30 Minuscule, to 1. Yeah. But you have, to, as an actor who doesn't want to get typecast, you have to also have the courage to say no. So sometimes you'll be like, you have Not to. Easy. You'll be like, okay, you're getting thug number one, thug number two and you take those two jobs and then they go, right, we've got another film. It's a bigger role, but it's thug number three. And you have to go, you know what? I'm not doing that. I've done that. And I now need to evolve and move on because evolution will provide career longevity. Riz. I love Noel. <laughs> I love him. Noel, I love you, bro. <laughs> so every time I see him, it's like I have a little life coaching session. <laughs> Just be like, yeah, how you doing? He's like, yeah, Riz, good. Anyway, listen, brother, I've been thinking, and this is what we got to do. This is how we got to evolve. And this is, it's like, yeah, I want to vote for Noel. Vote Noel. Hashtag vote Noel, please. Do you echo anything that he says, though, there? Um, yeah, listen, I mean, I think that's just absolutely bang on the money. It's about um, being selective with what you want to do. And it's about telling the stories that you believe in and you want to tell, not just because it will give you career longevity, but because you'll be better at that job. You'll be better at doing a job that you love. But I mean, it's interesting, you know, talking about, you know, the Russian baddie or whatever. Mm. I think it works in stages. And I kind of said this in a couple of interviews this week. So anyone who's heard this before, I apologize. But I, I do believe this. I think, first of all, you get the stereotypes, right? If you're East Asian, you're going to play the Kung Fu master. If you're Asian, you're going to play the shopkeeper, taxi driver, terrorist. If you're <laughs> black dude, you're going to be, um, you know... Careful. <laughs> You're going to be an upstanding citizen that has no involvement in violent crime. You're going to be the mugger or gangster. Be uh, honest. Let's be go. honest. Hey, That's what they said do. It, not me. So, the dealer. So you start off with that. Then you move on from that. You move on to stage two. Stage mm. two is it is about kung fu. It is about gun crime and drug dealing. It's about terrorism. But we switch the stereotypes. We flip them. So suddenly this drug dealer is not a baddie, he's humanized, maybe. We get to see things from their point of view, like a film I did called Shifty or Top Boy, for example. Mm -hmm. We see the world through their eyes. They're humans now. They're not just stereotypes. Or Four Lions. Yeah, it's about terrorism. It's about that. But we're flipping it. And Reluctant Fundamentalist is part of that as well. It's about the war on terror, but it's smashing assumptions. It's overturning that dominant narrative. And then finally you get to stage three and that's where we're getting to. That's the pro promised land. That's where people like Noel and Idris and I've been lucky as well to do some of those films as well. That kind of, he's just a guy. You're just a guy. Yeah, his, the colour of his skin happens to be whatever, but he's just a guy like Take, Will Smith. Takes a great script and a great actor though to really make that happen and make it work well, for me. We've, well, we've, we're moving into that. I mean, mm. if, just even if you look at some of the films that um, I'm, I'm not at the forefront of that. Other people are leading the way and they have done, but say Shifty for example is a, is a lovely little independent film I did a few years ago it's got nothing to do with my ethnicity at all Trishna is set in India there's a film with myself and Frida Pinto but absolutely nothing that ethnicity is incidental so I think we're moving in that direction and if I'm honest I think the US is much more ready to embrace that change than the UK um, but it's okay we'll go to America we'll make those films and then we'll come back here and Stretched out over here as well. A lot of British actors making waves in America Huge right now. Huge waves. More so than over here, which is interesting. More opportunities seem to be arising over there. Um, before you go, um, well, be before I let you go, Rihanna, what yeah. are you going to say? Gonna well, say I was just going to ask, so you must be getting more and more scripts through the door now. So what has been the most interesting thing that you've been landed with recently? Well, you know, I just did something that's really exciting. Um, I'm probably not going to talk about it, but I'm sure. going to just about tell it. you. So um, it's, um, it's a HBO show. Um, where myself and James Gandolfini played the lead roles. And um, it's direct, written and directed by Steve Zalian, mm -hmm. who did like Gangs of New York, um, I mean, Schindler's List, just like an Oscar winning Don. And it was amazing. And I played a kid from Queens, New York. And um, 
and I'm, I'm excited about it, man. There's yeah, there's a couple of good things in the pipeline right now. It's it's just as as ever, it's juggling the same kind of acting and music. I've got a mixtape and an album that's going to be out this year, and then I've got some of these projects. But what I really want to do. I'm going to pitch this to you. I've got a project to pitch you, Trevor. <laughs> okay, feel free, man. You're going right, to pitch it live, pitch it live, pitch it live. Get ready for a no, Get ready for a no. Be, ready. Big, be it's... big enough for a no. You can watch this live, by the way. This pitch is online live right now. So, okay. let's see. You're under right, pressure. Then. So, Trevor, yeah, I'll pitch risk. you an idea. Go on, it's a feature film documentary mm-hmm. about the history of UK dance music on, starring the Mad Hatter. Easy now. Star- starring Easy Jazzy now. B, starring Wiley, yeah. starring all the dons that have brought this culture that is one of the most innovative contributions that UK has like made it. to global culture I like and it. mainstreamed it. I like it. Are you going to back it? Are you, uh, you going to make it happen? I'm going to play you. That's on, how we break out of stereotypes, on, that, on that note, on that note, right, we're going to play your favourite song of all time <laughs> after this. I think that was a jokey pitch, but I do like the start of it. The end, I'm not sure about. Don Cheadle's always said he wanted to play me. Bro, listen, man, why are you trying to do me out of You've heard his English accent. It's never <laughs> to me. We're the same height, bro. We're the same height. <laughs>